Hello and welcome to my presentation about ions, ionic bonds and covalent bonds. My name is Jamie Moore. This presentation was put together to, co to coincide with the assignment criteria seen here. I have gathered outside information to elaborate further on the subject's structure and bonding. In this short presentation we'll be looking at the following criteria. Formation of ions in terms of electronic structure, nature of the ionic bond, formation of single and multiple covalent bonds, and you'll see some dot and cross diagrams. Ions are atoms which carry an electric charge because they have either gained or lost one or more electrons. If an atom has gained electrons, it will become negatively charged, whereas if an atom has lost electrons, it will become positively charged. There are two types of chemical bonds, a covalent bond, which is the sharing of electrons between atoms, and an ionic bond, the complete transfer of valence electrons between atoms. Stability isn't, uh, in an atom can be achieved through achieving a full outer shell of electrons. A hydrogen atom will need to acquire an electron or lose one. An ionic bond occurs when the transfer of an electron from one or more atoms to another atom, creating two ions. Chlorine has the atomic structure of 17 and therefore has the 17 electrons. Here you can see the electronic structure of chlorine. The third shell has the capacity to hold 18 electrons. Chlorine has seven in its third shell, meaning to achieve stability, an electron will be needed in the 3p subshell. With the additional electron, the atom becomes negatively charged ion, which then becomes a chemical formula, Cl negative. When the atom loses electrons, it obtains a positive charge. These are called cations. When an atom acquires electrons, it obtains a negative charge. These are called anions. Metal atoms tend to become more cations, while non-metal atoms tend to become anions. As you can see by the diagram here. Ionic bonds are essentially a bond between two or more ions with the electrostatic attraction of different charges keeping them together. Ionic bonds require an electro electron donor, often a metal, and an electron acceptor, a non-metal. Ions are formed naturally in the upper atmosphere due to the energy of UV rays, and ions are far also formed in the lower atmosphere due to the radioactive radiation and cosmic waves. Now, let's have a look at sodium chloride. Here you can see the electrical uh, configuration of both sodium and chlorine. In order for both atoms to stabilize, sodium loses the outmost electron, causing it to become positively charged sodium ion, which is the Na+. Giving the electron to chlorine causes it to become negatively charged chlorine ion, which is the Cl negative. This attraction forms an ionic bond. The two opposites attract cause an ionic bond. The molecule that is formed is called sodium chloride, which is most commonly known as salt, table salt, and has the chemical form, uh, formula of NaCl. Here are some property characteristics of ions and ionic bonds. Um, first of all, the strongest type of chemical bond due to being polar opposites can often dissolve in water, making ionic compounds good electrolytes. High melting point and boiling points with high enthrolytes, uh, enthropies, are fusion and vaporization. They're hard and brittle, ionic compound form crystalline structures because of strong electrostatic attraction between positive and negative ions, as well as they are good insulators. Now we are going to look at the formulation of single and multiple covalent bonds. Covalent bonding is the sharing of electrons between atoms. This type of bonding occurs between two atoms of the same element or of elements close to each other in the periodic table. The electrostatic attraction occurs between the positively charged nucleus of each atom and a pair of shared negatively charged electrons. The sharing of a pair of electrons is called a single covalent bond, but there are double and triple bonds. 
Hydrogen has a single electron in its first shell. In order for its first shell, it needs to acquire another electron. It shares its electron with another hydrogen atom to form H2, as you can see by the diagram here. Now we can see what different types of covalent bonds there are. A single covalent bond is when two atoms share a single pair of electrons, represented by the single line. A double covalent bond is when two atoms share two pairs of electrons, represented by the double line. And a triple covalent bond is when two atoms share three pairs of electrons, represented by the triple line. And you can see some examples in the picture here. Other examples of covalent bonds, carbon and hydrogen. Carbon requires four ele electrons to fill its outer shell and will form a single covalent bond with four atoms of hydrogen creating CH4 or methane. Oxygen and hydrogen. Oxygen requires two electron hydrogen electrons to achieve full shell and become stable, creating H2O or water. It can react with another oxygen molecule with the formulation of a double bond. Nitrogen requires three electrons to fill its outer shell, forming a covalent bond with another nitrogen atom creating N2. A triple covalent bond is required to form a stable N2. There are many properties of covalently bonded substances. Most commonly, um, covalent compounds have a relatively low melting point and boiling point. Covalent compounds usually have lower enth uh, enthalpies of fusion and vaporization than ionic compounds. Covalent compounds tend to be soft and relatively flexible. Covalent compounds tend to be more flammable than ionic compounds. When dissolved in water, covalent compounds don't conduct electricity. And last but not least, many covalent compounds don't dissolve well in water. A coordinate bond, also known as a dative covalent bond, is a covalent bond in which both electrons come from the same atom. In the image, the nitrogen atom provides both electrons in bonding with the hydrogen atom, as you can see there. Here I've drawn four dot to dot uh, dot and cross diagrams, the first being water, or H2O. Oxygen requires two electrons to fill its outer shell and will form a covalent bond with two atoms of hydrogen to accomplish this. Secondly is carbon dioxide, or CO2. Carbon requires four electrons to fill its outer shell, oxygen requires two. Therefore carbon will form two double bonds, one of each with two different oxygen atoms. The third diagram is ammonia, or NH3. Nitrogen requires three electrons to fill its outer shell. It will form a covalent bond with three atoms of hydrogen. There is an unbonded lone pair of electrons to form the nitrogen atom. And lastly is methane, or CH4. Carbon requires four electrons to fill its outer shell. It will form a covalent bond with four atoms of hydrogen. Thank you for watching my presentation. And as you can see here, are the references that I have used. Thank you.